Hey guys, it's PC Purse, Pussycat Purse, and I'm back with another episode of the Dancer Reviews where me, a dancer, is going to review pole and pop culture, so music videos, movies, series, all that. And today we're back with another episode of P Valley. We're on episode four, so come on in. All right, so when we start this episode, like it's just going down in the pink. The money's coming down. Roulette, whisper there on the stage, they're making money. Like all the girls are just doing their own thing. But there's that one dance, I think it's Toy, and she just has seasonal allergies. But you know, that's the time when it's like if people sneeze, it was like, oh my God, like get away, like you have COVID. So she's in there, she's getting money, and she's dancing with, remember the chick last season who she had <laughs> gotten divorced from her husband. She was in there just blowing her money. She's still in there blowing money fast. So, but she gets sneezed on. And then we find out she's with the health department. So she's like, oh, I'm shutting y'all down. Y'all out of control in here. Y'all got to get it together, like, by tomorrow type thing. And it's funny because they're like, now, we remember you. You're the chick who was sleeping with her husband's mama. So that bought them a little bit of extra time. But still, they have to, like, get things together fast. And then inside the dressing room, Brazil and... um Roulette got into it because she, you know, rumors are going around like we know how Roulette gets down. So she gets mad about that. They get into a fight and Big L has to drag her out after she beat that girl's behind. So when Big L gets her by herself, he's telling her, you know, you remind me of my daughter. And, you know, whatever you doing, like you can get finesse to be the finesse to be the finesse. So, you know, I guess they're going to have kind of like a little father daughter relationship. We'll see. You don't know. So, but she definitely kind of called him on like, oh, you telling me about myself. I know you up to some shit too. So one thing I have to say I'm enjoying about this season is like how they're incorporating like some of these funny viral moments. So they had some girls on the <laughs> on the news talking about the pink, the way they had that, that thing back in the day with LaBella Noche. <laughs> and the girl was like... <laughs> If you can't go to Limbo and No Chase, where can you go? So they did that with the paint and it was real funny. So that was cute. And then, you know, Cliff and Mercedes are like this. So he had to up to tell her about the fight and um, to tell her about uh, Andre running for mayor. And she gets a phone call from the coach. Well, a text from the coach like, hey, you need to come finish what she started. So it's like, OK, yeah, I got to go back to that. So then Miss Mississippi is, you know, she's on Instagram going live because she's got a product that's coming out and she's going to visit Gidget and it's just a good time. But Lil Martin is like, yo, why are my deals not coming through like this? So, you know, just kind of looking at his manager, his manager's like, chill, 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 you know? And it's just, you know, we're just watching how things are going with the two of them. So Autumn, you know, we find that she ain't got no friends, you know, so she's still sleeping in the pink. And Corbin comes to visit her and he offers her a million dollars to sell the paint. And she's like, well, since you try to offer me so much money so fast, I already know I can come up with some bread off you. So, no, I'm not going to take it. And um, then Andre goes home and he catches his wife having an affair. He catches his wife on her knees doing her thing. So he kicks the guy out without his clothes and they get into an argument. And but they're also just kind of talking and he's telling her how he came home to get permission because he wants to run for mayor. She's like, you're not going to get it. And that bothered him more than the affair. So <sighs> that relationship is doomed. Whatever. There's no poll there. So let's just keep going. So then Mercedes goes back to the coach's house. The wife is there. So they start talking. So Mercedes is looking around like, God, he's not here. Yeah, I got to sit here with this chick. All right, let's 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 have some conversation. So they're talking and it's like the wife wants to dislike her but can't help but like her. So they have some nice moments. They have some insulting moments. Mercedes takes her clothes off. Well, most of them. It gets on the pole. She gets the wife to try it a little bit. You know, you can't help it. When there's a girl around a pole, you're just like, yeah, you want to try? You want to do something? Usually the other person wants to learn something. You kind of want to teach them. So she tried to teach her how to climb it. It was a real bad fail. You know, I did a video on how to climb, so y'all should check that out if you want to learn how to climb a pole. But it should, no, I've never seen anybody have a fail that bad ever in life. She just like took a step down, went down to the floor. I've never seen that before, but I digress. 
So she gets on the pole and the wife starts to photograph her. And it was supposed to be no rules in their contract, but she allows her to do it. And it's, they're having a lot of sexy moments, you know? One thing I really love about the pink is how much of a family it is. So Cliff brings grandma to the pink and she's so excited. She's like, oh, we got the pink. You know, Loretta Devon is crazy. I love her. We love her. So, um, yeah. And then who is it? Toy, I think, wants to make up for sneezing and stuff. And she gets everybody to come to lend a hand. Big L came with some scammers, some Africans <laughs> that had, I guess, like a whole bunch of sanitizer and just things that they needed. And they're just trying to get things up to like pass inspection. And Mercedes, of course, is busy, so she's not getting these messages. Even Diamond shows up to help. And so all the girls are like, mm, sexy Diamond, yes. What, who wouldn't, but you know. So then they're in the car, you know Gidget gets hyped. Gidget has a good time. And they're in the hearse, I mean. And they hear DJ Never Scared on the radio and they're like, oh my God, this is why he was called like, oh, we here. So Gidget calls them, what, you on the radio? happy so they're like yes yeah, send us in the vocals so we can try to work something out so it's good that dj never scared is looking out i like him so hopefully we can get a little right on the radio again all right so i think i jumped the gun a little bit when i was talking about how mercedes taught her how to climb so now mercedes is when it's when mercedes is teaching the wife how to climb a little bit and the wife is showing her how she can't twerk and there's so many like <laughs> women that have a hard time understanding how to twerk and i get it i also did a tutorial on how to twerk on the floor so go check that out too i was breaking down a little bit but she helps her a little bit and you know she got a little bit better and then the girls get a little touchy feely and then the wife reveals that she was actually the one that called mercedes so they start getting you know into it so we know that's going mercedes is having some new experiences <laughs> So then we go back to the pink and grandma's at the pink hitting on the young men, you know, having a good time. You know how she is. And the girls are just sitting around theorizing about Diamond, just lusting after him, talking about what happened to him, why he's so crazy. And Toy, of course, has the real tea, but you know. And Diamond is just walking around and he goes into the, the aerial pole room and he starts seeing like a hand come out from the floor, you know. But in big L pulls up to the side, he's telling him, you know, I... I there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is a prime location for the stuff that I'm trying to do, feel me? So I kind of need somebody like you around. So what's up? Diamond is like, okay. And then we see Roulette watching um, Mercedes Mama preach over the news. And she seems really touched and impacted by it. And she winds up leaving and she gets caught by her little new flame. Um, I can't remember his name. White chocolate. I'll remember his name for the next one. And um, he catches her crying and she tells him that it's making her think of her, her brother who was killed by the police and why the people like him always get away with it. So they have a little moment and he's trying to come for her and just listen to her story. So Diamond and Big Bone meet up and we know in real life they really feeling each other because she's having a baby right now. But um, they meet up. And she lets him know she's interested. And she's like, yo, get on the back of my bike. She scooped him. He's like, ooh, this is how we get some scenes between them. I would pay to see that. Yes. <laughs> but this is interesting because we haven't seen him like anybody aside from uh, Mississippi. But Mississippi needed some saving. So Big Bone don't seem like she needs saving. Let's, let's see what this dynamic is going to be. This is different. He seems like the soft one around her. So it's this big, strong man being all soft around her. It's, we like to see it. So then Mercedes wakes up and the whole thing is just flipped in reverse. You feel me? She wakes up and the wife, Far Farrah, that's her name, is gone. Her phone is there and she's got a text message from her like, yeah, okay. And she's all like, you know. See your way out. It was great, you know, and she's got all these other texts about her mama preaching and how people love it because, you know, people feel moved by her mama. Her mama's just, you know, and then she looks over on the nightstand instead of the coach leaving her the money on the nightstand, it's the wife. And she's like, well, I'll be there, you know, kind of look. She left her a lot of money, though. The murder, little murder's friend. First of all, Lil Murder is looking for his look because now his hair went from blonde to green and he's sitting there and there with all the people 
and they're watching TV. They have an altercation because his friend goes off about the TV being turned off and he storms off. And it's just like a lot of like, what is going on with him? But it scares Mississippi because, you know, she uh, is a domestic abuse survivor. So it's all the loud sounds, all the fighting, it just has her on edge. And it's sad to see. And we actually saw it like if you watch the, the Jocelyn's one with Gaia, remember they got into the fight and she... Like the girls were fighting and she got under a table and was hiding. Like it's it's a real thing. And it's really sad to see. Okay, so this next scene, right? Let me tell you. I knew it was like as it was progressing, I knew it was letting us know that okay, murder and teak definitely had something. But I didn't know it was going know what they had. Okay, so Teak hears Mur Lil Murder's music and Murder's working on some stuff and he gets up to go into the bathroom where he is to pee and murder kind of looks over checking out his, his you know so i'm like oh okay he gave him the look like look like i not feel so i'm like oh, okay so then he goes out and he's talking about how proud of him he is and just like the way they're looking at each other it's like okay they definitely had an intimate past and then the way he embraces him is like a past lover that you still have feelings for. And then they start kissing. I'm like, ooh, yes. I'm like, it was very steamy. I was getting worked up. It was very hot. But then we see them, we see them take it all the way. And I'm like, oh, they're definitely past lovers. Like, I wonder if this is like the love that he had before Cliff. And he's definitely, you know, so it was, it was, whoa, it was a moment. Like, oh, yeah, okay. And it's like, it's supposed to be a private moment, but you're feeling like it's a hotel room. How private is it? Is what went through my mind, but they have their moment, but it's disturbed because when they wake up in the morning, he's like, who's Cliff? And why you don't write me no postcards like that? And Lil Murder's like, ay, 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 ay. I just felt bad for T because nobody likes being replaced. Like you love somebody that much and then they go in to love somebody else. Ooh, ooh, it hurts. It hurts so bad, but... And Lil Murray feels like he feels so bad about it, too. But what can he do? You know? What's the term I learned? A stepping stone soulmate. I heard that before. Maybe that's, maybe that's that type of situation, you know? You ever heard that term before? Let me know. So then Andre and Autumn are having a conversation about the paint and selling. And I don't know why she would have this conversation. I don't know why she would have this conversation on property of the pink within ear reach, ear reach of other people. So she's talking about how she always wanted to flip the property and how she wants to sell. And, you know, Mercedes wants to fight, but Uncle Clifford is like, no. But they confront her about it. And it's just like a blow up. Now everybody's mad at her. Like, she really ain't got no friends now. Like, you just, you don't care about this establishment. It's more than just the money to them. And she's like, I'm a businesswoman. I'm a business man. So then we go back to Andre. And Andre is in his new house and Tidal's family is pissed like how could he leave it to you and then Andre's happy like this is fault this is right along in the lines of what he needs to become mayor you know like he's got property there he can prove all types of things that he needs so let's see he might have a fighting chance for this and then in the very end Uncle Cliff we uh see Lil Murder and he gets a text from Uncle Clifford but now he's in this complicated situation with <sighs> Teak so whoo that was a lot. Our tutorial for today. Mercedes climbed on the pole and she came into a cross legged sit into a layback. It's a beginner invert, but it's a scary one. So I'm going to show you um, how to do it, but make sure you're ready to do this one before you try it because anytime you do any type of invert, like there's danger associated with it and try it with uh, a mat first. So I would suggest this isn't something you learn at home for the first time by yourself, like Go to a studio, do it under the supervision of somebody else, and have some safety stuff underneath you. So anyway, follow me to the pole. Ready to try some pole laybacks? I'm not going to lie to you. This one can feel a little bit scary because you're going to be going upside down. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do this. One that will feel a lot more secure when you're first learning it, and then the other one that's just with straight legs. So one, you'll have your legs bent. One, you'll have your legs straight. And as long as you remember your inner thigh set, you're good to go.
Before we take it up there, let's talk about some things down here. As you can see, I've got my mat. Uh, I suggest you learn this move with a mat and under the supervision of someone else. Um, this guy thinks he's got my back, but I suggest you find a human to watch yours. Right, Stinky? Yeah. So we're down here because I want you to practice squeezing your inner thighs. So when you're in your inner thigh set, one leg is gonna be on top of the other. You're gonna have your ankles crossed and you're gonna squeeze your thighs. So I want you to practice pretending to break the pole in half with your thigh squeeze. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Try that on both sides. That's what's gonna hold you in the air. So when you lay back, the pole is gonna come a little bit further down, so don't be afraid. So you can practice just holding this and squeezing and you can see what it feels like. It's not too comfortable. And then you can also practice sitting up. So just now, that's how you're gonna sit up with an abdominal crunch. So you're gonna lay back, you're gonna squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then when you sit up, you're gonna crunch up and let your hands find the pole. Practice that with both legs on top. Also to note, when you do the figure four, whatever leg is on top is gonna to bend. And then for support, opposite hand can grab that foot. The pole is gonna come into the knee part of your leg and you'll lay back. Then you'll release the free hand first and then the opposite arm. And your arms will be behind you. So again, if this leg were on top, this leg would be the one to bend. This hand will grab for this foot. The pole is gonna come to about here. I release this hand. My hands can go behind me. And then I'll use my abs to sit up and find the pole. All right, let's take it up. So how was that for you? Is it scary? I first learning to go upside down, it scares me and it still scares me a little bit. So um, if you're nervous, don't be afraid. Don't try, be afraid to, you know, start low and then work your way up. Do the increments. Let me know how it goes for you. See you for the next one. Yeah.